underground, working in the opal mine, and so far today I've found probably about $5,000 worth of material. We've got some in the wall just here. Take a look at this. So we're digging this stuff out. It's looking absolutely beautiful. Hopefully it keeps going. Um, this could be a really good day for us. This week we get Jamin from the Young Guns Opal Hunters bringing me a lovely piece of opal from their mine. And I get to cut it. Damon, how's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, good to Thanks see you. Thanks for as well. coming in. Thanks um, for having us here. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure. You get to see the, all the, the workshop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah. very jealous. <laughs> you got a Cab King too, don't you? Yeah, I got a Cab King. Nice. Um, brand new as well. Just got it um, a couple of weeks ago. So, Beautiful. Yeah, and done a like little it? bit of work on it. Yeah. But um, I thought I might bring you in today. One of our better pieces. Um, I've been a bit scared to cut it myself. Yeah. So I thought, you know, hit up the master. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, That's take cool. a look at this one. This one um, was actually found while we were filming Outback Opal Hunters. So something we've held onto for quite a while because it yep. was some really nice color. Yep. We That's haven't taken beautiful. any dirt off it whatsoever. So I mean, there could be problems, but Ooh. it does look, you know, like a quite a nice piece of opal. So we do have high hopes for this one. Yeah. And tell me, does, do you see much of this quality from white cliffs? Um, that is probably the single best piece of opal that we have ever found really? uh, okay. while out there on the field. Yep. And we've not really seen much better. Magnificent. That is gorgeous crystal. Yeah, gorgeous. I mean, a bit of an odd shape for a piece of rough. Like it's not a mm. something, you know, like I've studied, I've studied it quite a fair bit and yep. just think, you know, how would I cut it? Yep. Um, you know, I'm not too sure. That's why, you know, it's again yeah. something we thought we might need a little bit of guidance on. Yep. And, uh, you know, might even just pass off to yep. you to cut for us instead. I can do that. Yeah. Um, I see two colour bars in there, mm -hmm. but I do see a line going through those two colour bars now, they're not straight. Yeah. It's going on a bit of an angle. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be a big challenge to get a clean stone with the clean colour bar yeah. um, out of the whole piece. So it might be more than one piece. Yeah, no, that's fine. We just depends. Completely, I've talked to the boys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're completely keen to just leave it up to you and cool. uh, your expert Very cool. opinion on what is the best uh, for this awesome. stone. Well, I'll really look forward to cutting that one. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll leave you to it. All right. Good All right. luck with it and Thank you. Uh, can't wait to see. <laughs> see ya. Very good. See you later. Oh, crikey. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's some pressure right there, cutting someone else's stones. I don't usually do it anymore, but um, I'm going to give it a go just for these guys. Rightio. Well... An Outback Opal Hunter's piece of opal. I need to take very good care of this one. So I'm going to take it on the finest wheel I've got, which is a 500 grit. And we're just going to clean off the sand and, um, and the edges around here, just to see how good these color bars are and where is the best places to cut a stone. So let's get the wheel going. <laughs> The Gemfish flashlight is a torch that can help you see inclusions inside any gem. If you're looking to buy one, you can get one at my website, blackopaldirect.com. starting to come through there. Oh, this White Cliffs Opal is quite a hard opal. It's really quite good. I like it. Solid silica. Some of, um, some of, and the Mooka Opal is also very, very hard. I like it. I can bring that side in a little bit more because of that sand sitting there. pattern on the end where the rest of it's really nice pattern so <clears throat> I'm thinking that sand has made a uh, has changed the pattern a little bit on the end there all right I think I'm gonna go and take the sand off and um, see how they color faces on that top color bar 
so I'm going in. Here we go. Would you believe this is the first time in many, many years that I've cut a piece of white cliffs? <laughs> the colors start to show through. I like that red blue color. That looks pretty good to me. Although seam opal is pretty straightforward to cut, White Cliffs Opal can cut very differently to other fields, so I do have to be super careful about how I go about it. I'm just not sure if it's gonna face the right way. And if I get it right, we could be talking not hundreds, but thousands of dollars in difference. Bar, which is this thin little color bar here I'm wondering if this color bar here is better on the other side so I think I'm gonna try a little bit on the other side and give it a bit of a test it's a nice color right there so this may be the better color bar to choose it's kind of looking like it is and I'm going in again The other side of this piece wasn't quite what I was looking for and I'm looking for better colour. I'm sure there is better colour further in. There's got to be. I like that flat colour right there. That's probably the best I've seen so far. scraping and it's telling me that it's not going in too far. At this time I thought, oh, I should be able to get the sand out now, but I think there's a little bit more than it looks. struggle to cut other people's opal so please don't ask me because this is beautiful opal but it's not mine and their pressure is high and um, I'm having to make executive decisions like uh, slicing it in two because of this deep sand spot and this sand here but this color is much better than that color and Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to chop it here, I think, and make a cushion cut, and then I'm gonna work on whatever I can there. Ooh. Okay, Justin, this isn't your opal, so don't just chop it up. So just to, um, just to make sure, I'm gonna use the Dremel um, just to touch up some of this sand here. I'm just gonna do it dry, because I wanna see how deep it goes.
This is for the people that always comment, Justin, use a Dremel to remove the sand. So here you go, I'm doing it now. What would you do? Would you remove the sand with the Dremel or keep going with the cutting machine? I'd love to hear your comments. The more I dremel, the more the sand turns up. It's not looking good. Alright, so now that we've got most of the sand out, there's a little bit more to come out of the middle there. Just going to give it a bit of a shape back on the wheel and we're going to make a nice carving out of it. I know it's not what you expected, but I can't afford to lose this beautiful colour. There's too much gorgeous play of colour. One big hole in the middle and if I chop it up, I'll be losing another three or four carrots. I can just see the Young Guns Opal Hunters watching this video going, DON'T LOSE THAT COLOUR! Beautiful colour all around. Now with most of that sand out, the pressure's off. And all I have to do is work with the Dremel to get it totally clean and polish it up beautifully. So this is essentially the shape we're going to go with for now. It's going to be a carving and I can show Jamin and he can decide later at a later point whether he wants to cut um, nice little gems out of it or keep it as a polished carving. So now the process is pretty much polishing um, all the surfaces. So instead of dopping the stone um, I'm going to polish it by hand or attempt to polish most of it by hand and then any little dips I'm going to use with the Dremel and we'll try and get a nice carving out of it. So all of these surfaces are pretty hard to, to polish just with a dot because I, you, know, you can't polish one side. So I'm just going to get into it and get straight on the 600 grit Nova wheel. With the pressure off, I'm really enjoying cutting and polishing this White Cliffs piece. I haven't cut one for a long time and it's really hard opal, which is a great thing. It means the silica spheres built up in this stone are very tight together and that makes opal very strong. White Cliffs is one of the southernmost opal mining fields in Australia. It has produced white and crystal opal over the years and a large supplier of crystal inlay in the early days. But what it's really famous for is the fossilised opal pineapples, which Jamin's father is very famous for finding. And you know, it's really nice to see another father and son with the sun carrying on the tradition of opal to keep the dream alive for the rest of us to enjoy. The lucky last step of the process is to polish up that little hole where I've dremeled the sand out.
while I was in Hong Kong, I bought myself a new Dremel and I'm really keen to try it out. It seems to work a beaut. To find out more about this gem, head over to the Young Guns Opal Hunters YouTube channel and you'll see their version of this gorgeous gem. Well that's another one folks, hope you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.